Hey everyone, welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen, a super special episode. As you notice, I've been gone for a little bit and it's because, because of this guy. So I am technically still on mat leave, but I wanted to take the time to introduce this little new member of Hot Thai Kitchen to you and also do a little bit of an AMA Ask Me Anything video, which I haven't done for a little while. So this is Khan, baby Khan. Say hi, Sawadikap. Sawadikap. <laughs> so we're gonna see how how long he lasts, but I want to do this um, Ask Me Anything video with you, with him. And so I open it up to social media for question submissions on Ask Me Anything. And a lot of people submitted questions. Thank you so much um, for those of you who did. I'm not going to be able to get to all the, the questions, unfortunately, even though I really want to, but there are like hundreds and hundreds of questions. Um, but if I don't get to it here, I will try to answer on Facebook or Instagram as much as I can anyway. The themes that have emerged from these questions were three different uh, themes. Uh, there were questions asked about the birth, baby, and being a mom, and then there were questions that asked about my life in general, and then there are questions that ask about food. So we'll start with baby birth mom questions. All right, let's get started. Yeah? Yeah? Several people wanted to know about my birth experience, how it went. Um, so I had a really positive birth experience. It was quite a long labor. I labored for 24 hours. Um, I pushed for two and this guy came out quite big. He was 3,700 grams or eight pound, two ounces. So, you know, he was, he was a good size. All completely natural. I didn't use any drugs, which is what I really, really wanted. Um, and I have to credit my doula for that because without her, I don't think I would have been able to do it completely naturally, but she was instrumental in my birth experience. And for those of you who don't know, a doula is um, basically a birth coach, a support person who help you, help support you emotionally, mentally, and even physically throughout the birth to make sure you have a positive birth experience. And I had a wonderful doula. Kaki Didi asked um, if I did any of the cultural restrictions after birth. And I think what you're talking about is the, the Chinese sitting in period where for 30 days, you're not supposed to um, go anywhere. You're not supposed to shower, wash your hair and just stay in the house and eat all sorts of stuff. No, I didn't do any of that. I mean, I did eat some traditional um, Chinese dishes that my mother-in-law made me. But other than that, we didn't do any of that. And in Thailand, not a lot of people there isn't really much of, of a tradition postpartum. Um, so people don't have to stay in the house for 30 days, so on and so forth. Some people do it, but for me, nope. Mary O. Spangler asked if he was planned. And if he was, when did I, how did I know that this was the right time? So he was definitely planned. And how I decided that this was the right time was my age, basically. <laughs> I was 34 by the time we got married. And then I was like, okay, I'm 34 now. If we're going to have a baby, who knows how long it's going to take before we get pregnant. So that was basically the main reason. Um, fortunately, we got pregnant right away. So here we are, little baby. And then somebody else asked, I think you eat you, Wilani, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Wilani Cooper asked if I'm going to have a second. Well, let's say we're not thinking about it right now. Oh, we're just trying to survive this one first and then see how it goes after. Kate Dunning asks, what food did I eat immediately after birth? My husband and I brought a bottle of very nice champagne to the hospital because I've been off alcohol for nine months and I wanted something celebratory after the baby was born. So we had that. And also we had a friend that brought in some takeout tacos really, really good. And then my mother-in-law and my father-in-law came in with some Chinese papaya soup, which is a thing you're supposed to eat after birth because papaya is supposed to be good for breast milk production. So yeah, those were some of the things I had right after birth. Oh, and by the way, this hair is mom hair because this little guy keeps pulling my hair <laughs> when I feed him. So I was like, forget it. This is too much hassle. I'm just cutting it short. So it's a bit of a uh, retro hot Thai kitchen because if any of you remember the original original hot Thai kitchen video like 10 years ago this is the hair I had 
A couple of people ask what I'm cooking now that I'm a mom. Um, so, oh baby, maybe he's expired. No, I think we're gonna give you back to daddy. Okay, okay. Say สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับเจอกันใหม่ครับ Somebody asks, "What are my favorite postpartum meals now that I'm a mom and it's busy?" There hasn't been one thing that I cook a lot of. Although in the beginning, very very beginning, I did a lot of noodle soups because I made a lot of uh, beef stock and other and pork stock frozen before I gave birth. And then it's really quick to put noodle soup together. You thaw it, you boil some noodles, you throw in some vegetables. I got pre-sliced meat from like the hot pot section of Asian grocery stores, which is really handy. And the noodle soups come super quick together. If I want it a little bit more, a little bit more of a jazzed-up noodle soup, I'll throw in some spices like boat noodle style, some cinnamon, star anise, cloves, which is super quick to do. Yeah, so I did a, a few of that. But other than that, it's been a lot of stir fries, which are really quick, and uh, a lot of takeouts that friends have been <laughs> friends have been bringing to us when we have them over. Where do you find the time for a YouTube channel now that baby is born? I don't. <laughs> Thus, my mat leave. No, but that's like the struggle that I have right now is figuring out how am I going to get back to filming. And then I think this answers another question somebody asked: is how much time I spend on my YouTube channel, my website, and all that. And I used to spend an equivalent of a full-time job. Basically, that's what I did. The only thing I did, um, but you know, it was it, it was comfortable, right? I had plenty of time to do everything. Um, and now that is a very very different story. So part of the struggle now is figuring out how am I how am I going to get back um, to work and what that's going to look like. What's going to be my new normal new routine? So yeah, stay tuned. Are you hoping your baby will be bilingual? If yes, what languages? Left from San Francisco. So I am speaking to him in Thai. Exclusively when I am alone with him. My husband is Chinese, but he doesn't speak. Enough Cantonese to really teach him anything, so Cantonese is probably not going to be one of those languages. However, him being born in Canada, I'm hoping that he can go to like a French immersion school or something. So maybe French will be the third language that he will learn. So who knows? But at least definitely English and Thai. Does eating spicy food influence the taste of breast milk? I don't know. I haven't tried. <laughs> He doesn't seem to complain. I've been eating spicy food, and he seems to like my milk just fine. Um, I know I don't think spicy goes through, but I know that flavors of spices and garlic and things like that does go through. Khan has never complained. He is a big eater. He's got a big appetite. He feeds a lot. Feeding him has never been an issue, and he's growing very, very quickly. So whatever I'm eating, he seems to like it. A few of you wanted to know how I picked the name Khan. So my thinking was, I really wanted a Thai name. Because I want him to always remember his roots. Him being born here, it's easy to forget sometimes where you're from. So if his name is Thai, I'm hoping that'll be a, a constant reminder. But I also want it to be a name that's easy to say and simple for other people to say. And not Thai names are like not all Thai names are like that. And I've lived a whole life of having a complicated name, and I do not wish that upon him. Also, I wanted a Thai name that sounds decent in English, because there's a lot of really beautiful Thai names. But when you say it in English, it just doesn't sound as good. So you know, this was a good, a good compromise. And trust me, when I put all of those restrictions on the name, there were very, very few names left for me to choose from. And somebody asked if he also has a Chinese name because my husband is Chinese, and right now he doesn't. But I think I will get sort of an unofficial uh, Chinese name for him. I'll get my in-laws to come up with something for him just so he remembers his other roots as well. And then several people asked me about what I think about being a mom. Was being a mother what I expected? What's the best part? And they surprised me. And is it what I expected? No. In many ways, it's Better than I expected, and in many ways, it's harder than I expected. It's better than I expected, mainly because I didn't realize how much love I was going to feel. I think if if any of you have been a parent, you understand it's like this feeling, this amount of love that you have for this baby is is unlike anything you've ever experienced. And it was quite overwhelming in the beginning. I was like, oh my god, I just, just like I love this thing so much. It hurts. Um, so that's been really wonderful. 
um, to have him and he's just a joy to be around when he's not screaming. But also, it's a lot busier than I thought. I mean, I always thought being a parent was going to be busy. Like, you know, people know that. Like, being a mom to a baby is busy. But I had no idea what that actually looks like in practical terms like what do you mean busy like what are you doing exactly and i had this idea that i'll take a couple months off filming and then you know after that i'll just work my baby i'm just gonna put my baby to sleep he's gonna sleep for a few hours at a time and then i'm just going and work and edit my videos and do all sorts of things and then life is gonna be okay but oh my god that just not that's not how it works you don't just put a baby to bed and then they just magically fall asleep you have to Putting a baby to sleep is a struggle in and of itself and then when they do fall asleep you may get 15 minutes out of it or maybe half an hour if you're lucky maybe a couple of hours so yeah it's it's a lot busier than I thought it was going to be but I'm learning and we're getting I'm getting a hang of it so so it's going okay. <laughs> New Fong is curious whether I found that my palate taste buds have changed after giving birth. Not after giving birth, but definitely when I was pregnant, I ate a lot saltier, I ate a lot um, spicier as well. I really, really wanted spicy food and salty food, lots of MSG. Um, I really wanted that during pregnancy. But now, after birth, I feel like things have evened out, normalized back the way it used to be. So that is the end of mom birth baby questions. Now we're going to move on to general my life questions. Um, I just want to say though, a lot of you had questions about my story of how I came to do what I do today. There is an entire video of that where I gave you my life history up until, you know, last couple of years. So if you want to check that out, I will link to it in the description below. Joe Gansher asks, what part of Thailand are your ancestors and yourself from? So some of you know this, but some of you don't, but my ancestors are not from Thailand. Surprise! <laughs> I've been a fraud this whole time. No, I'm Thai Chinese, so my grandfathers were the first generation to be born in Thailand, but their wives were born in China, but then came to Thailand afterwards. So my parents were both born in Thailand. Um, so in Thailand, there are many, many, many Thai, Chinese, Thai people who are ethnically Chinese and we just blend in pretty well. So it's sort of like saying, you know, you're Canadian or American, but your roots are English and Irish, you know, like it's, it's all blended now. People don't really pay attention to it as much. And by the way, my mom's side of the family is from Hainan, which is a, an island off the southeastern part of China. They make very good chicken rice. Hainanese chicken rice is awesome. And my dad's side of the family is Teochew, um, which some of you will know what that is. It's also a southeastern part of China as well, which is why the Chinese people in Thailand don't look the same as, um, say, people from central part of China. They look closer to the Southeast Asians. What is your hometown and what part of Thailand do you come from and how does that reflect on your cooking? So my hometown is Hat Yai. It is a city in the south of Thailand. To be honest, I don't think my cooking would have been vastly affected if I didn't, if I was say born in Bangkok because my parents are both not from there. So in our household, there isn't like a tradition of Southern food that, that I was born into. My parents were both born in Bangkok. Um, there definitely were dishes common in Hat Yai that you don't find in Bangkok, but not, not a whole lot. Has there been any point in your culinary career that you felt like giving up and why? And how did you manage to overcome it? I don't think I ever gave, I ever wanted to give up per se, because I don't know what I would do if I wasn't in food. So like food has always been the only like point of focus in my life career wise for as long as I remember. So even if I was done with that particular job, it was never a question in my mind that the next job was going to be food related as well. So when I, when I was in the restaurant industry, at one point I decided I wanted to leave it because the lifestyle of working nights and weekends just wasn't going to work anymore with my husband being like a nine to five Monday to Friday um, type of person. So I decided to leave that lifestyle, but I always knew that whatever I was going to do next had to be food related. So here I am. How did you meet Craig? 
So Craig, my husband, by the way, just in case you don't know, Adam is not my husband. Adam is my friend who's a cameraman. <laughs> Craig is my husband who refuses to appear on camera because he's a private person and I respect that. And um, we met through mutual friends. So his friend married my friend and they had an engagement party and that's where we met. And the funny story of that was Craig did not like me the first time he saw me because we were at a restaurant and I sent my food back because I thought it was too salty. Like it was inedibly salty and I sent my food back. So Craig sort of witnessed this thing and he's like, who is this snooty chef chick who's too good for this food and sending her food back? And like, you know, so he thought I was super high maintenance and snobby. But after when we got to know each other, he realized that I eat even saltier than he does. So he's like, oh, that dish must have been really salty. <laughs> I'm like, yes, of course. I don't just send food back because I don't like it. I have principles around that. What inspired you to get into culinary? And what was your first dish you've ever made as a young child? The first dish I ever made as a young child, and I think this is true for many, many, many Thai children, is a Thai omelette. It is so easy. I do have a recipe for it, but you really don't need a recipe. You put eggs and fish sauce and you fry it in a lot of oil to get it nice and brown and crispy over rice, a little bit of sriracha or ketchup if you're a kid and you don't want spicy. Delicious. And what inspired me to get into culinary, the culinary world? Just my love of food. Like I've I don't remember ever not being excited about food and so when it came time for p picking a career there was no question that it had to be food related. Did you spend some time in San Francisco and what did you think about the city food wise and in general? Yes, in fact I, Hot Thai Kitchen was born in San Francisco. I was there for culinary school and I loved, loved, loved San Francisco. Everything about it, the food was great. In fact, one of the reasons I went to San Francisco was because I knew it was a great food city. And so I wanted to go to culinary school in a place where the food was also happening as well. Do you ever wish you were raising your children in Thailand? I feel like my childhood was so much more exciting than my kids because I grew up in Thailand and I wish they could. I thought this was a really interesting question. I asked her to expand on it a little bit and she said that it was very adventurous. You know, they were riding elephants and they were eating with monkeys and waterfalls in Kanchanaburi and just beaches and all of this stuff. Um, and I don't know where she lives now, but you know, there doesn't seem to be that. And, and I think, I think a lot of it is, is very much a perspective of where you're from. Because when I came to Canada, I thought here was so exciting. Like they have so many outdoors activities and that I never did when I was in Bangkok. Like, the only thing I ever did in Bangkok was going to the movies and bowling and like shopping and eat. That was all the only thing we did. And here people go hiking and rock climbing and like there's the ocean and I don't know, paddle boarding, whatever, whatever else people do here outdoorsy. And I thought here was so adventurous. So I think it's definitely a matter of perspective. And, and I think a lot of people go to Thailand and the chaos is exciting. It's like, you know, lots of colors and street vendors and everything is everywhere and it's exciting that way. But when I came to Canada, I was like, oh, it's so nice. It's so peaceful, it's so clean. There's not like craziness all over the place. So, <laughs> so I think it's just different perspective. Um, I definitely would want my baby to have experience in both places. And there's definitely better uh, social like healthcare system and educate public education system here is definitely better. So I'm glad that he's here for that. Um, but yes, Thailand has its merits to a lot. It's very rich culturally. You're right about the festivals and the traditions and the, all that. Yes, that is definitely uh, a little bit lacking here. In some ways it is beneficial to be in Thailand and in some ways it's beneficial for him to be here. So, you know, I try to do both if I can. Let's move on now to food related questions. I hear that I hear from my friends in Bangkok that Jae Phai is overrated and the wait is long just to order. Have you ever tried her food? So Jae Phai, for those of you who don't know, is the street vendor who got a, a Michelin star, one Michelin star for her food. And she, even though she's street food, she likes to use expensive, big seafood. So she's like elevated street food. So I have never tried Jae Phai's food. I did know about her prior to her becoming famous because she was on TV and all this stuff a few times. I don't know if I would wait an hour and a half just to try it. Like honestly, because I'm sure it's delicious, but I've also had the same dishes that are really, really delicious elsewhere. And I just don't know if, 
I don't think that her delicious is going to be worth an hour and a half of waiting plus all that time sitting in traffic to trying to get to her restaurant. I just don't know how much more delicious it could possibly be that would justify the extra effort that I have to go through. You know what I mean? So like I'm sure it's great. If you're close to her, if it's not a big out of the way thing or you want to go for the experience, you can take pictures and share like by all means I support that. Um, it's just for me, like it's, it's yeah. Jin Tan asks, what was the hardest dish I've ever made and why was it difficult? There are a couple like kanom krok which are those little coconut pancakes was definitely a challenge. Not because of the recipe itself, but the technique involved. I definitely had to try it many, many times to get the right consistency and to mess with the heat and all that. So that took many tries to get it right. Another one was the roti banana pancake. I had to do many, many iterations of that to get the dough consistency right, to get the stretching technique right, to get the frying technique right. So I don't think there there's a dish that's difficult per se, but a dish that is heavily technique driven. Those have been the ones that I've had the most challenges with. Now Mary Jane Sherwin asks, what are some favorite children's food in Thailand, especially for breakfast and lunch? And a lot of people actually ask about children's food in Thailand. As far as I remember anyway, Kids eat whatever the adults eat, just the non-spicy version of it. Like I grew up eating Tom Yum in school, like the school cafeteria. It just didn't have a whole lot of spice in it. Um, all the stir fries that are not spicy. So anything that is not spicy, kids ate those. I, I don't think like here, you know, you think of certain dishes as being kids food, like chicken fingers and fries or like, I don't know, what do kids eat here? chicken nuggets, mac and cheese. So like really carb heavy things, spaghetti. But in Thailand, like I don't recall restaurants having a kid's menu separately. Let's just put it that way. Um, kids just eat whatever is available, just the not spicy version of it. And as they get older, and this is another question people ask is how do you um, introduce spice to little kids? Little by little, basically. You just like feed them a little bit of heat at a time and eventually they will grow a tolerance for it. And some people don't ever have a high tolerance for chilies. I think another question is coming up is what is my heat tolerance for spicy food? And honestly, it's not that much compared to Thai people anyway, like compared to people here. Yeah, I can eat spicy food, but compared to Thai people, like I'm like a three out of 10, you know, like I'm and there's a lot of people like me. So if you don't eat spicy food, I want you to know that it is okay. And there are many, many Thai people who also don't eat spicy food. Not very spicy anyway. We all eat a little bit of spicy, but you know, not everyone's like Mark Weems, you know? Saigon Kam asks, what are Westerners' misunderstandings about Thai culture or Thai food according to my experience? Ha! How long do we have? I think I just said it. it uh, spicy food is one thing that all Thai food is spicy. All Thai food is littered with peanuts is another thing. Peanut sauce being like a big thing in Thai cuisine, like it is not a thing. Peanut sauce is not a thing. We use peanut sauce to dip in satay and that it's not like a thing we squirt on everything like ketchup. In terms of culture, the only thing I can think of is, is many Westerners think of Thailand and they think of like the sex industry and the lady boys and the prostitution and, and, and somehow it's like this racy country, <laughs> um, which that exists for sure. But for the most part, if you step outside of that industry, which is very, it's a very small part of Thailand. If you step outside of that, Thai people are extremely conservative. So we don't kiss in public. We like public display of affection is just a no, no, like holding hands is just about as much as you can get away with. Um, media, like television, movies, is, are very conservative, like sexually, there's no nude scenes, like only like when I was little, people don't even kiss on TV. Like, you know, they'll go to kiss and then the camera just pans somewhere else. Um, now I think they're, they're starting to show more of that. But, you know, like outside of the sex industry, people are very, very conservative. Steve Jenghan asks, regular or sticky rice as a preference? Neither. 
either like those things are good with different things regular rice is good for things with sauce because it absorbs sauce well like curries and stir fries like you will never want to eat curries with sticky rice not for me anyway sticky rice is good for dry things like barbecue you know because you can like hand eat it and it's munchy and chewy and it's good for northern northern food and northeastern food so there's no preference it's just what is good with the food i'm eating right now how often do you eat poutine? Aha, now that is a misconception of Canadian culture or Canadian food. So poutine is more of a French Canadian thing. Now, I don't know if how often they eat it in Quebec, but here or in, in English speaking Canada, it's definitely not a thing people eat on a regular basis. It exists, but you know, I haven't had poutine in at least a year. When was the last time you had poutine, Adam? A couple of years. A couple of years. And he's from Montreal. So somebody asks, he asked this in Thai, um, but the translation basically is that when it comes to cooking, he can follow a recipe and it's fine. But if he's left to wing a recipe, like he knows what goes in it, but there's no amounts given that he's just supposed to like intuitively cook, he can never make it taste good. So what advice do I have for that? And there is no easy solution it's all practice but what advice I will give you is when you are following a recipe pay attention to the amount and remember it because you will notice that there is a pattern like if you're fry doing a stir fry for two people there's going to be about this much salty things in it so say for example there's going to be roughly about two tablespoons total of soy sauce and oyster sauce it might be a combination of different sauces but total is going to be about two tablespoons for this amount so now you've got like a ballpark figure to go with and then once you start to realize that your winging it will be a lot more accurate so like for me when I wing it, when I'm not cooking uh, with a recipe, I kind of know intuitively how many glugs of soy sauce it takes to at least get it close to what it needs to be. And then I will go and taste it and adjust accordingly. At least I will know how many glugs will not make it too salty, right? And how much sugar will not make it too sweet because I know that I can always add more, but I can't take it back. And also when you taste for food, always think about, okay, is it salty enough? And just think about, think about one flavor at a time. Is it salty enough? Is it sweet enough? Is it acidic enough? If you sort of think about it one flavor at a time, it may help you process and determine what is needed. This question made me laugh. Don asks, he loves spicy food, like really, really, really spicy food. Um, but the problem for him is the next morning he has to suffer the consequences of the spicy food when it exits and he is asking whether i have a trick that would help alleviate morning after situation let's say um, and honestly do i have a trick no i don't have i don't personally have a trick but if i were to make an educated guess I would make sure that when you eat it, that you dilute it with fatty things as well. So don't just eat like a straight up spicy bowl of tom yum that's just like a lot of water, right? Because the spicy stuff in chilies is fat soluble. So if you pair it with rich, heavy, greasy food, likely it will help di dissolve the spicy stuff and dilute it that so when it comes out, it's not quite as painful. So try that and let me know how it goes. Vega asks, Type 2 diabetes is spreading like crazy, especially among people who have a genetic predisposition on it. Any Thai food that are low carbs with whole grains, etc, etc, etc. So I think Thai food is good and bad for diabetes for two reasons. We eat everything with rice, with white rice. So the rice part is not good. The noodles are obviously not good as well. That's refined carbs. Um, and most dishes have a little bit of sugar in it. So those are not great. But at the same time, if you say replace the rice with something else or you decide to just not eat rice um, and you reduce the amount of sugar that you use in the recipes, most of Thai dishes are actually really healthy. There's a lot of vegetables, a lot of protein, a lot of herbs. So it does require some adjustments, but anything like all the curries are good, the salads are good, the stir fries are good if you just make those little adjustments. Because we don't do a lot of like potato or any starchy starchy foods aside from aside from the side of rice 
Robert McLean is asking, just learning to cook Thai food, I've done tom yum and Thai green curry, what are some others that I can do? Ha! How much time do you have? I have a whole website full of recipes you can try. But you know what, if you've done a soup, if you've done a curry, I would encourage you to next try a stir fry of some sort. I think that'll, or a salad, that'll complete your, your experience a little bit more. So that's it, you guys. We got to get going now because this guy is expiring very, very soon. I need to get him fed. I hope you enjoyed that. And I will be back soon with more cooking videos. So stay tuned. Um, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram if you want to keep updated on just other stuff that I do outside of the YouTube channel. And I will see you next time. Bye! Say so what, Sawaddi kab.